We got a bent rear upper control arm on a Civic that needs to be replaced. Let's get to work. Okay, as you can see, we got the driver's side here, or the left side. We're going to be replacing the rear left upper control arm. Evidently, the owner hit a uh, curb or something like that, and it appears they bent that control arm. It's very slight. When I looked at it, it's really hard to tell, but it's bent um, slightly, and so it's thrown off the alignment, and so we need to get it fixed. And the temperature outside is ridiculously hot, so we got to run the cooler. So you're, sorry, you're going to have to put up with the noise. All right, so to do this, we need to lift the vehicle up. And so coming from the back of the vehicle right past the bumper cover here, you can see there's our bracket. That's a reinforced bracket to lift the vehicle up on this, on this model. And so we're going to put the jack right there and lift this vehicle up. Now, as you can see, uh, the muffler is over here. You can see the exhaust coming out over there. Um, sometimes these have a center muffler right down the middle and so the lift point is going to be and there'll be designated little markers on each side of the uh, uh, muffler pipe up there just a little bit or some models have it it's either on this side or this side over here I think it's on the driver's side there's a little bracket right here and you'll lift it up um, and just remember the vehicle is going to kind of tip a little bit if that's the case but in any event, this is where our lift point is today, and so that's where we're going to lift the car. And we're not going to get under a vehicle with only a jack, so we need to put jack stands. So looking from the rear tire here, we're going to go up under the car, and you can see that there is our reinforced bracket for the jack stand. So we got one here and one on the other side. So once we lift the vehicle up, I'm going to put jack stands on each side. And on the front of the vehicle, we're going to chalk the tires so this vehicle doesn't roll away on us when we lift it up in the air. And as you can see, I'm doing both sides. And we're just going to give it a little nudge, make sure this thing is safe to work on now that it's up in the air. All right, now we got to get the wheel off. 19 millimeter socket is what's going to take these off. Obviously, uh, if you don't have an impact, you may need to break these loose while the vehicle uh, tire is still touching the ground. Um, if you put the uh, parking brake on, It'll, it should stay still enough where you could break them loose right now if you don't have an impact. With an impact, it's no problem. It'll spin them right off. Okay, now that we got the rear wheel off, how about a little orientation? You can see we have our rear trailing arm. Um, this is our upper control arm in the rear and this is what we're going to be replacing this is our bent part um, below that right down there right there that's our lower control arm a and then over here this is our lower uh, control arm B as in Bravo and then we got our shock and then we have our spring and while we're here I should mention if you're gonna do the other side it's exactly the same way in fact it's the same part if the part is just turned around the other way we just got to make sure you can see there's a sticker right there. Hopefully you can see it, which tells us which way it goes to the inside. Um, the only difference between this side and the other side would be we have the filler neck in our way over here. You can see there's a bolt right up there, and this thing is right in our way. And then we got our bolt and nut over here. Otherwise, it's the same thing on the other side. All right, we'll get the easy bolt and nut off right here first. Now, as you can see, this vehicle is new, and I live in Arizona. This vehicle has been in Arizona, so there's no rust. Um, so this should come off pretty good. Um, what happens typically on these, this is a bushing right here, and the bolt that goes through seizes to the bushing in there. And then so the whole thing will spin. The, the bolt will spin, and the bushing inside, the rubber will break. This rubber that's right here will break, and just the whole thing will spin. It won't get seized right here. This nut will most likely come off, but it gets seized inside there, and then it's going to take some torch work or some uh, or cutting right here on each side. You just got to be careful. We don't want to damage the knuckle, and this looks like it's an aluminum knuckle, so 
definitely going to be softer and we don't want to hurt it. Um, so yeah, if you see a lot of rust on there, you may be in for a fight. So I'm going to take a 17 millimeter wrench, put it on this side, 17 millimeter socket on my uh, impact here, and we're going to try to get this bolt to spin. We want to see that bolt spin. Just like that. So that's a good sign that it came out. We'll just have to tap it out. Eh, I just needed to keep going. And there she is. And taking a look at the bolt, the smooth part right here is what's going to get caught. That's what's going to seize up right inside of our metal uh, on the bushing there. Uh, these you can see are not fluted. Many times the, the bolts will come fluted. Honda did not flute these. All right, so you can see this is where we just took the bolt out. We follow our upper control arm all the way around. There's our other bushing right there. Can't even reach it with my finger. And then the, the bolt head that we need to get, it's a 17 millimeter, at least I believe it is. It's right there and that bolt goes through that bushing. And you can see if it seizes in there, we're done for. We're, we're gonna have such a fight getting that out. We're probably gonna have to drop the gas tank and everything else. Um, now there's a welded nut on the other side, so we don't have to worry about that. But we gotta get that bolt to spin free and not be seized in there. And you can see it's tight. We don't have any room. I don't think I can get a socket right here. Uh, we might be able to sneak a long wrench up from the bottom. All right, hopefully you're able to see. I was able to sneak a long 3 8 inch ratchet right there. This one is one that has a flex head on it. And then I just have a shallow 17 millimeter socket on the end there. And I just have enough room, so hopefully I can reach in there and muscle this thing off. All right, let's see if I can hold you and, and get this thing off. Ah. I'll let it move, that's a good thing. Hopefully it's not moving inside the bushing. Just barely enough room. Okay, I can feel it loosening up, so either we broke everything or the bolt is coming out. All right, and so coming up underneath the vehicle, there we can get a better look at our upper control arm. Hopefully you can see the bolt up there. Yeah, you can see the head right in the center of the camera there. It's definitely loosened um, and it's coming out, so that's a good sign. There should be, you can see there's a gap there. Well, maybe you can't. You can see there's a gap between the bolt head and the, this piece right here. So now I just gotta get it all the way out. It's just gonna be a slow process because you can see what I'm working with. Everything's in the way. Ah, oh, this is so much fun. Well, I got tired of ratcheting and I grabbed my cordless. And with a bunch of extensions and a universal 17, I was able to just sneak it up right past through here. Go up on the other side of the pipe and you just got to be careful not to hurt it. And hopefully you can see, but the bolt is all the way out. Now we just got to get it out of the actual bushing, but it's all the way loose now. All right, I'm just going to try to sneak a pry bar in there. Let's see if I can't pop it all the way out. Come on. There, now it should loosen up, yeah. There we go, I just needed to pop it out of this thing. Well, there's the bolt in there that I've been fighting with. Definitely hidden in there. Now I didn't, I was, I was waiting to pop this out because I didn't want it to get cockeyed in case this thing was bent and kind of under pressure. Um, I didn't want it to put tension on the bolt, but it was doing it anyway, so I had to pop it out no matter what. And now we can just bring our prize out. There it is. All right, there's the part for our new control arm. We're going to be using a genuine Honda control arm. And also, I'm going to be replacing the bolt, or both bolts and the nut. And here they are right here. So there's the part number for the longer bolt. Right there. Hopefully you can see that. The bag doesn't want to cooperate. 
But anyway, there's the part number for that. And then the nut that goes along with it is right there. And the other bolt, the one we just were fighting with to get out. Uh, hopefully you can see that. That one right there. All right, there's the new one and the old one next to each other. As always, verify your parts that are, are the same before you install them. And as far as it, this old one being bent, it's really difficult to tell. Um, when I compare them next to each other, it looks like this is slightly bent and out of spec. But like I said, it's really, really hard to tell because there's so many curves and angles on this thing. Um, for sure, it looks like this bushing was tweaked a little bit. And I think this one also, I think they were both tweaked. Um, and so that could have been the problem also that made it look like it was cockeyed in the car. So in any event, let's get this new one installed. All right, here are the new bolts. I went ahead and sprayed some fluid film on them just right here on the smooth shank. Hopefully this will prevent any problems in the future of this these seizing in there. And we're spraying that fluid film, like I said before. We don't want this to get seized up into that metal um, bushing right there. This piece right here just welds itself to the bolt and that's what we don't want. All right, now you notice these parts are marked. We've got the inner just like that. So this needs to go to the inside. And it, you know, when you put it on, uh, whoops, when you put it on, you know, the driver's side, it's gonna be like that. And when you put it on the passenger side, it's gonna be the other way, but it's the same part. And we always gotta make sure that this faces the inside. All right, we gotta make sure we got it go in the right direction. We're just gonna set this up into place get it up where it belongs we can set that right there now I'm gonna grab the bolt and I got to try to fish it in there I don't I probably can't have the camera right there because you guys are gonna be in my way but I just got to reach up in there and get that bolt in Now I got that bolt most of the way in now, but it's still loose, you can see. Um, but we got to get this knuckle at a better angle, so we'll just lift this up a little bit. I just have the jack right under the, the uh, what is that, the lower uh, B arm, and we'll just jack it up to get a better, better positioning on this so we can get this in. All right, I had to turn the camera off for a second, say a few choice words, um, but I got it to line up and I destroyed a glove. As you can see, now our new bolt is going through. So now we can just put the new nut on the other end and now we're good to go. But anytime you're dealing with suspension parts, sometimes they don't like to line up perfectly and you gotta, you gotta pry and manipulate and that's what I had to do here. So now we're good to go. All right, now typically before we tighten these down to their final torque, we always want to put these bushings up where they're gonna ride most of their life. Uh, so generally what you do is you jack it up. So we got the jack under here with a piece of wood so we're protecting the, the part there. We'll jack it up till it just starts to come off the jack stand and then we tighten it down. That's generally what you do. But in this case, Honda has us do a little measurement also. So in this case, we're gonna measure the hole right here up to the frame and we're supposed to have 116.6 millimeters or 4.591 inches now why Honda came up with this weird number I don't know but that's that's the specs they give and then if you have an SI you can see what it is right there we don't have an SI so we're going with 116.6 so I got my fancy schmancy little depth gauge right there and we're set at 116.6 right on the money so let's go measure it. All right, now we'll just sneak up under here. We'll take our little gauge, we'll touch the frame, and then you can see, well, that's a bad angle, but we're right in the middle there. The top of my gauge there is right at the hole. So we're perfect. 
we really didn't need to measure. You just put it up in the air until it starts to come off the jack stand and it's right where it's supposed to be. But Honda likes to give this little measurement, but if it was off, there's not much more we can do. We can't raise it any higher. All right, now this is a locking type nut right here. So as you see, as you're bringing it in, right there it starts to grab the threads. That's why you're supposed to replace this and probably why Honda, they, they tend to like to tell you to replace all the suspension bolts every time you pull one off. But it definitely grabs onto the threads. So because of that, I'm just gonna take my impact and we're gonna run this down. Then we'll torque it. All right, now we can do our final torque with it up where it's supposed to be. Uh, 56, if that was at all legible, 56 foot-pounds for both of them. Now we can get a torque wrench on this first one. We're not going to be able to get one on the second one, so we'll just have to do our best. Okay, looking from underneath, you can see I just have a standard 3 8 inch socket and ratchet on here. I'll get it as tight as I can, and then I'll do my best to guesstimate 56 foot-pounds because I'm not going to be able to get my torque wrench in here. There's no room, barely enough room for a ratchet. That's about as tight as I can get it with this short ratchet. Um, I might be able to, I might be able to sneak a long wrench right here and get it. All right, yeah. As you can see, I was able to sneak an extra long wrench right up there, and I can do one final tightening down here. When when you have lots of leverage, you can put a decent amount of torque on here. So we'll just get it tight. All right, that's good. Beep, 56. All right, now that we got them all torqued, we can lower our jack back down. And get it out of the way. All right, always a good idea, double check your work. We know we torqued that, we know we torqued that. We're not leaving any tools, we're good to go. All right, now we can put our wheel back on. And we'll pull our front wheel chocks on both sides, and sometimes they get kind of jammed in there. All right, now we'll do one final torque of the lug nuts, 80 foot-pounds. That's where they're supposed to be. Well, there you go. That's how I do these rear upper control arms on these uh, newer Civics. Sometimes they're a breeze, sometimes they fight you all the way. Um, this one fought me for a little bit. Um, that, that one bolt in the back, it's a pain in the butt. You can't get to it. So, hey, man, hey, if you enjoyed the video, it helped you out. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.